Welcome back to E Rodic the Brand. Hi, my name is Eden Lee, and I'm your favorite dating and sex coach. You guys ate, and I'm talking ate up my sex tips, how to be better in bed video part one. If you haven't watched the first part to this video, I highly recommend you do that. It lays down a really solid foundation to making sure you are being bigger and better in bed in all senses. To be better in bed, it requires your mental baby. Believe it or not, okay? You can pump and thrust and hump and moan and groan, but that won't get you too far if you don't have the right tools in your motherfucking toolbox. Toolbox kit should not have porn, all right? When you come into the bedroom, porn, all it does is lower your sex drive, believe it or not. It does not give you creativity as much as you want to lie about it and say, I learned so much off of porn. It literally stunted your creativity mentally, and it has totally robbed you from mental arousal, how to mentally arouse somebody, how to arouse yourself. And if you are not mentally arousing your partner, sex is boring. Sex is pretty much basic. You are probably a sexual partner that he or she's going to forget about after a few months. Let's be real. Now, a lot of people are like, well, Eden, if I'm not going to use porn, what am I supposed to do? Like, how am I supposed to really explore different fantasies or really understand what somebody else might like based off of their kinks or interests? I have a solution for you. Fervor is an app. Okay. So you can download it on your phone. I've done it. I've masturbated to it. It has given me some really fun ideas. It has really played into a lot of the things I'm into and allowed me to explore it without utilizing porn. So if, if you want a tool and I'm telling you no porn and you'll thank me later, this is the next best thing. This is like a way to get a bit of that porn fix without actually fucking up your mental. This is like an online audiobook situation. It is an app you can download on any of your devices. You can listen to it. I recommend putting on some headphones if you really want to get into it. Noise canceling. Get into bed. Get cozy. Grab your favorite lube, your favorite toy, your fingers, or your partner and listen to it together. You can pick through so many topics and narratives that you might be interested in, such as billionaire, BDSM, some of you guys are into vampires, werewolves, all of that shit, boss, sub, dom, like so many options that you have. And then you can kind of pick which level, how long you want to listen to it. If you want like a quickie, they've got ones that are like three minutes, four minutes. Quickly, you listen to it, it builds you up, you get to fantasize, you get to use your motherfucking brain cells. This will help you come up with those creative ideas if you are stumped. It'll help you indulge in any fantasies that you might have in a healthier manner. You can either read them so they have the audio version to listen to, or you can actually physically scroll like an ebook on your phone. I personally love the BDSM billionaire boss like kind of narrative. I think it's hot. It's sexy. It's stuff I'm into when it comes to like playing out fantasies or kinks. And if you're not familiar with, let's say, BDSM and you are not really necessarily into it, but your partner is and you want to try something like that, you can get some really great ideas or understand more of it from listening to these stories on this app. So I highly recommend that if you are trying to wean off of porn, if you find yourself only being able to masturbate or get excited by watching porn, which is fucking terrible and is a sign of addiction, switch on to this, explore it, have fun. I'll leave all the links down below and more information. On to my next tip, tempo. Okay, tempo. This is so fucking underrated and this has to do with foreplay, which I'll get into, but also in the bedroom. You guys think that it's a slow build upwards, right? Like you think it's like linear. Like everyone thinks everything is just like fucking like this. When in life is anything linear? So why the fuck in the bedroom do you think it's linear? Why do you think it's just like from slow to a faster pace and then we come? Let's switch it up. To be better in bed, you have to master, master this tool. It is so fucking underrated, just like almost all the tips I tell you about. And that is why, because it's underrated, most people don't utilize it. And most people actually suck in bed. Tempo allows you to take control over the sexual experience, but it also allows you to create this unpredictability, this spontaneity that we all crave for in the bedroom. Especially if you're in a relationship and you find yourself like getting into a fucking routine where it's just like, okay, like we kiss for like a, two, three minutes and then we like start fucking and then we go into the position we both like, and this is his coming position. This is my coming position. And yeah. then that's the end. The point is to explore. The point is to enhance your sexuality with your partner. And how do you do that without changing everything, without overwhelming you? It's tempo. So if you like to start off slow because you like to fill each other out, then 
fine, do that. Build it up, but then bring it back down. This will not only help you last longer in bed if you slow it down when you feel like you're about to peak, when you feel like you're about to come. This will also make the other person be like, what am I going to expect? Now, be careful with tempo because a lot of you guys make this fucking mistake. The mistake is always that you back and forth, back and forth, switch positions. Oh my God, it's a motherfucking circus and I can't even keep up, okay? Like your tempo is a mess. You want it to make sense. How does it make sense? If you want it to last long, if you want to build intensity, if you want them to crave and drool and salivate and beg for more, you need to slow it down when things get really good. And sometimes it might be a little bit of a teasing situation for most people, but you have to read your partner. So if you've been teasing them for a hot minute, okay, maybe like let's not suffer here and like let's get shit done. This is also great to test the waters too, right? So when you're building up the tempo and you see they really like something, keep that in mind and revert back to it. The funny thing about tempo is it actually builds intensity, even if you slow it down. When you slow it down, the person is like, oh my God, why did you slow it down? But also, holy shit, like you're doing something else and this is so different and so special and so unique. A subcategory of tempo is hard and soft. A lot of people like to be either dominated or be the dominant one. Some people like to be more submissive and some people just stick to those roles for the rest of their goddamn life. Let's say you're sexting a partner and you realize that they're really into you being dominant to them. Okay. This is like a very typical situation. That doesn't mean that you have to be like blazing guns, pulling her hair, choking her, pounding her down all the time and keeping it rough all the time. Just because they say they like it rough doesn't mean that rough is the way to go throughout the whole experience, which is similar to tempo. So what you do here is you mix it up. I want you to come in there, let's say, be a little bit more handsy and then soften it once you give them a little bit of that, okay? This is, again, what builds anticipation. If you can see, the common theme of how to be better in bed is to make the whole experience a little bit more unpredictable, but in a comfortable, safe way way they keep each other hot and horny keeping each other hot and horny requires a little mix of both the softness creates intimacy so like in let's say you're doing doggy style for example lift her up and hold her up close to you and kiss her neck a little bit and then bring her back down having each other soak in on those moments and then switching it up another example i'll give you let's say you're making out right you're kissing soft whatever and suddenly you push the partner up against the wall and then like you pin their, their hands up on their head or something. That's a little bit more fast paced, more strong. And then as you like embrace in that moment, start to soften it. Right. Tempo and, and soft, soft and slash hard are your best friends. The combination of both, you do not have to be fancy in bed. You do not have to do crazy positions in order for you to look like you're fucking amazing A++ in bed. Because our bodies are filled with erogenous zones, the human touch is all that you really need. And you need to master hard, soft, and tempo. Those two in combination are killer or like kissing something soft, saying something sweet and then roughening it up. You know what I mean? And then like turning her around or turning him around and like, you know, going down on them or something. But like, the key here is to make sure you you fulfill that moment. And just as it's getting maybe like, OK, we already know that this is what we're doing. Start to switch it up. OK. But again, keep in mind, you don't want to go hard, soft, hard, soft, hard. It's like, whoa, I can't even absorb the moment. Make sure there's an absorption time. Okay. I don't know how else to put it. This is where you understanding body language is super important. Watch as their face is kind of like, oh, feeling it. Eyes are rolling back or whatever. And after they have a little bit of moment in that spot, in that headspace, in that vibe, switch it up. Ruby came to visit us. Hi, Ruby Lou. She's my little doggy. She just decided to pop in and say hi. I'm going to do an in-depth video about dirty talking in bed because that is super intimidating for so many people and it can go real wrong real quick and it can really fuck up the mood. So be very careful. That's why I always say modest, 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 modest. Start off modestly, start off slowly. Whispering, okay? Whispering is softer so you can really take in the moment and the volume of your voice doesn't throw them off in the moment. When someone's enjoying things in the bedroom, you want to keep the tone soft, Unless you're going rough, then being louder makes sense. Do you see what I'm saying? Start off slow. Keep it at a whisper tone or, or a softer spoken tone. Keep it you, though. Don't put on like a new voice. That's fucking weird unless you're doing role play and that's your vibe. But if you don't know what your vibe is with this person, then honestly, avoid that at all fucking costs. Speak. Okay? Moan. Show them when it feels good. This allows your partner to know what the fuck feels good for you and what doesn't. The problem with a lot of people is you guys fake it. Again, because of porn. You fake moan. You fake say shit. You think it's hot. Oh, my God. That's so good. Oh, my God. You're so deep. Like, bitch. What? But I'm not. You know, like, don't lie. 
be real, be realistic, moan when it's really good and don't say anything when it's just nice. You know what I mean? Like keep some silence going, keep the, the breath is hot enough hearing you guys like breathe harder and like breathe heavier. That's hot. You know, allow the natural parts of your bodies and what your mouth does in those moments to actually be the center of attention. The cherry on top that you throw in is those little sentences or little baby names or whatever that you want to throw in there. Even words of encouragement, okay, will really get people feeling more comfortable. This is the key. People love being complimented regardless of who they are, man, woman, it doesn't matter. Always throw in a little something and like, oh my God, that's so hot or you're so hot or holy fuck that ass or like whatever just adding that adds like this excitement for everybody like you're both doing a good job so words of encouragement use that mouth when it's necessary but also allow your breaths and your moans to come naturally sparingly at times at peak times when it makes sense I know it sounds like you have to think about when to say everything and when to do everything but when you're really in the moment and you're really present and this is why being mentally aroused and stimulated is important you will know when the right timing is because your mental is on the same page as your physical spontaneity this is so important but also people get it wrong so keep things spicy and spontaneous if you are very like a planning kind of person I want you to tell yourself once a week or whenever you see each other every other time I want to try and spice it up by doing something different when you do that, again, it's going along with the same theme of this video is it keeps things interesting. It's a little bit more unpredictable than what you probably have been doing or already doing with this partner. It gets routine. And when things get routine, it feels like your, you know, spark is fading when it really isn't. It requires effort, just like everything in life in a relationship and a job and this and that and friendships require effort. So does sex. OK, so does sex. At the beginning, it's always going to feel like, oh, my God, amazing, amazing, amazing. But after a while, you've explored all that you both are comfortable exploring with right now or all that you know that the other person likes and then you hit a wall and then you just become routine so promise yourself and this is what I do as a practice like how can I spice it up for myself and for him you know how can I change it up a little bit so it's not like holy shit who the fuck are you or like I don't want to turn him off if it's not something he's into you know unless I know it's something he's into then I can surprise him when he comes home and I can like be ready with something you know randomly it doesn't have there doesn't have to be a specific occasion for this to happen even in the bedroom like maybe take the lead you know, or maybe tell him something that like, you know, he might like, but you've never said before. Spontaneity, throw in something once in a blue moon. This will make them be like, holy fuck, I, I thought I knew her and I thought she was like this in bed, but holy fuck, like there's another side to her. And this interest and this intrigue keeps you sexy even outside of the bedroom. It will not only make you better in bed or make you seem like you're constantly, you know, something special in the bedroom, but even outside, they're going to look at you like afterwards and be like, huh. All right, spicy little secret. Like, what's going on there? To be honest, that's like more of a seducing little tip that I have hidden in my toolbox that I'm slowly exposing to you guys once in a while. But I will do maybe another video if you guys want on how to be a seductress or how to seduce. And last but not least, stimulate all the senses. If you want to be the best in bed, understand that when you stimulate all senses, the experience is like irreplaceable. Like it doesn't get better than that. Think of all your senses. So sight, smell, touch, taste, and sound. Okay. How can I involve all of these? A lot of them, like you, you kill like three birds with one stone, like, you know, sight, like what you're doing, even grab a mirror or fuck in front of a mirror that really changes up the POV of everything. You guys both get to watch it or even like demand him to watch you or he demands you to watch it. Like those little things honestly so fucking hot and is such a different kind of experience in the washer mirror you know or like on the floor if you have like a lower mirror watch her suck you off or vice versa tell him that you want to do that like these can really spice up things in the bedroom in a big way by literally doing nothing like honestly doing nothing smell you can light candles you can do the whole like incense like whatever but body lotion or something that you like that's minimal guys you're very close in proximity do not fucking take a perfume shower you fucking disgusting rats why don't you just shower use a nice body gel scrub it down smell good be clean even just a clean smell is nice you know what I mean anyways after a while you get sweaty and you know skin smells like skin and blah 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 whatever it is what it is we all have our own unique scents but it's important to also make sure that the surrounding areas smell good. Bed sheets, do they smell good? Honestly, it goes such a long way. When I'm having sex with a guy and his bed sheets smell like fucking old and nasty and a little stanky and a little musky, I'm just like, ugh. 
No, thank you. So just little things like that. Be mindful and taste. Now, people think food play right away when I say taste. I don't understand why you guys don't use lube. People are like, oh, lube is because I can't get her wet or something's wrong with. No, 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 no. That just goes to show that you're a fucking amateur and you can do so much better in bed. So you're welcome for me telling you this and saving you the embarrassment down the line. Coconut oil lube is natural, great for everybody and can be flavored. There's like sweeteners that are put in there that are natural. There's so many on the market. I'll put some of my favorites in the description below. I'll try and get you a coupon code for one of them. If I do, I will put them here. But coconut oil lube is great for vaginal sex, for sex in general, for blow jobs. And coconut lube has more grip. It's an oil. It'll stay lubricated for longer as your spit dries up. And it gets really annoying. And then your mouth gets sore and dry and this and that and uncomfortable. And, you know, and like down there too, sometimes like you have your days where you're more wet than others. It is what it is lube 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 for almost every sexual experience is phenomenal it is like the easiest thing to do make it sexy applying it on him or on her give them a massage while you do it slash oral sex while you do it I mean have the time of your life really indulge in the taste it'll make you want to do it longer it'll make it more pleasurable for both partners the coconut oil lube has more grip too in a way so it's not just like watery and you don't really feel it after a while it actually enhances sexual experience. I've tried it with my partner and he's just like, I honestly, like I love having sex with you, but like with a coconut oil lube, I never thought that it'd be that good. So, I mean, surprise them and show them that like, you know, a thing or two for anything anal play. Like I said, in my anal video, if you haven't watched that, go ahead and do so. If you're interested, water-based lube, always safest, healthiest, and best thing in the butt. So stick to that. And there are different flavors and different scents and different things like that. I would avoid fragrance ones, like make sure they're naturally just scented. I don't like anything that's not natural down there, um, especially during sex. Like let's just keep it nice and clean and we don't want to irritate anybody or anything. So in the butt, water-based lube, and then some of them are like lightly flavored. There are natural flavors available too. If you want to eat his ass, eat her ass. I mean, you guys can really utilize it. It's nothing crazy. You do not have to buy a bunch of sex toys. You do not have to buy a bunch of products. Grab a coconut oil lube. If you're into butt play, water-based lube, and the rest is literally up to you. When you stimulate the senses, you're making it an unforgettable experience. And just by doing those simple tweaks or just keeping them in the back of your mind before so that in the moment you really don't have to think about it. You know that you smell good. You know the room smells good. You know the bed smells good. You know that like people taste good right now. You're clean. Every, like you have nothing to worry about. And you can really focus on being present. And that's what automatically makes you better at sex. I can tell when a guy's mind is elsewhere or when my mind is elsewhere that I'm not performing my best or I don't feel my best and I can't really give to the experience as much. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this helped. I hope this gave you guys ideas. Don't forget to check out that app I was telling you about, Fervor. It's it fairly new, so there will be so much more coming out. So just stay tuned. Listen to it with yourself, with your partner. Send it to them too. And like a nice little sneaky tip is like when you're sexting or something, sending them like a story and be like, this was really hot. That teaches them what you like and then they can get like tips and tricks on what to do for the next sexual experience. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as my podcast, which is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts, e Rodic by Eden Middleman. You can just search that up and you will find it. Hit the bell for the notifications on my YouTube channel so that you never miss an episode. I've got so much spicy content coming for you guys. And I'll see you back here very soon.